Hello everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at something interesting from the Berkeley Math Tournament 2023. So in the tournament, there's something called the relay round, where some of the questions depends on the answer from previous questions. But the organizers have actually also written two questions that depend on the answers of each other. That sounds crazy, and without further ado, let us take a look at what these questions are and how we can solve both questions together. So over here, we have problems 19 and 20 from the tournament. So question 19 uses the answer to question 20. We let N20 be the answer to question 20. And Lien builds a pyramid out of equally sized blocks. The base has N20 blocks, and each successive layer has two fewer uh, blocks. And also there's exactly one block on the top of the uh, pyramid. So how many blocks are there in this pyramid? That's question 19. And question 19 is used in formulating question 20. So let n19 be the answer to question 19. The integer n19 minus 1 can be written in the form p square q cubed, where p and q are distinct one digit prime numbers. Compute 10p plus q minus 2. So this is pretty crazy because the answer to this is used in question 19 and the answer to question 19 is used in question 20. How do we go about solving both problems at the same time? Well, there's nothing much you can do except try solving question 19 first and treating n20 as a variable for now. So if uh, there's n20 blocks in the base, then the number of blocks in total is 1 plus 3 plus 5 until n20. Well, for a start, this lets you conclude that n20 is an odd number. And also because if you look at the form of the answer for n20 given by this expression, we can conclude that q must be an odd number. Let's write this down because we will use this later. But going back to question 19 for now, the sum of the first k odd numbers is equals to k squared. So we need to find out which uh, odd number is this. So this is the n20 plus 1 over 2 odd number. You can very quickly get this formula by just uh, pattern recognition. So since the sum of the first k odd numbers is k squared, we get a closed form expression for uh, question 19, which is given by this square over here. So right now we still haven't solved question 19 because we don't know the value of n20, but we can now take this expression and substitute it into question 20. So question 20 needs you to work with the number n19 minus 1. So we substitute in the answer for question 19 into uh, this expression here. So now we have this expression being equal to p square q cubed. But this is of the form a squared minus b squared. So I can write it as a plus b times a minus b, which is uh, the product of these two terms here. Now notice that these two terms uh, differ by 2, right? So the first question you can ask yourself is, is it going to be both even or both odd? Well, can these two terms be both even? Aha, so this is where a nifty observation comes in. If one of them is, uh, if they are both even, one of them is going to be divisible by 2 and the other one is going to be divisible by 4. So actually the product of both terms together will be divisible by 8. But notice that Q here is odd, so Q is not equal to 2, which means that in this prime factorization, the, our only hope is have uh, P equals to 2, but even so, this only gives a factor of 4, which is not enough to uh, give us a factor of 8. So this means that the assumption of both terms being even cannot happen. So we actually conclude that both of these terms are odd. And here's the next nice observation. If both of these are odd and differ by 2, then actually they are co-prime. Because if some prime number divides this factor, and that prime is at least 3, then that prime number cannot divide this factor, which differs uh, by 2. And conversely, a prime that divides this, which is odd, is not going to divide this. This means that both terms are co-prime. So if we have the factorization as p squared q cubed, it means one of these factors must be p squared and the other factor must be q cubed in some order. This means we now just need to find a p squared and a q cubed that differs by 2. And we can just directly brute force the possibility since p and q are one, uh, one digit prime numbers. So we have p squared being either 3 squared, 5 squared, or 7 squared, and q cubed being 3 cubed, 5 cubed, or 7 cubed. And the only pair that differs by 2 is 25 and 27, which means p equals 5 and q equals 3. 
So from here, we can uh, finish up the problem. We can compute uh, the answer to question 20 is 51. And the answer to question 90, which is given by this square over here, is 26 square. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this pair of problems, which depend on each other. And do stay tuned to the channel for more interesting math videos. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon.